What's up guys, welcome back to more Pokemon Sun and Moon Theory videos. I am the one integral and today we have Alchemy Theory V2, version 2, part 2, whatever you want to call it. We have sort of an addition to Alchemy Theory. Now that we have more information about the games, more sort of, you know, in, you know, characters, Pokemon coming in, we can go further into some things if it still works, of course. And for Alchemy Theory, it does. Of course, I did a first video on this, so my my theory, my suggestion would be, if you haven't watched that yet, go and watch that first. There's a link down below in the description, hopefully. But I'll go over and do a quick recap now, but of course it's not as detailed. So basically, the sort of the main basics behind Alchemy Theory is that there are three philosophical principles in Alchemy, which are Salt, Sulfur and Mercury. And it came up that apparently Rowlet looks like the salt symbol, um, Litten looks like the sulfur symbol, and then Poplio sort of looks like the mercury symbol. Sulfur obviously working for Litlia, Litten rather, um, because it's fire, sulfur, fire and brimstone, stuff like that. Uh, and obviously the other two not as linked there. But that is the first thing. And then we moved on and we looked at the elements, four elements in, um, in alchemy in general. We have uh, air, earth, water and fire. And we actually spotted the Earth element on one of the sort of very initial images of Sun and Moon on one of the temples um, behind, I believe it's the Lunala, we saw it behind, and spotted it back on sort of the back wall there, you can see. It seems to be the Earth symbol at least. So that's that so far. And then we also went on and talked about how, you know, not nothing too much extra, but we talked about all the different metals and the planets that are related. Um, when we look at alchemy in general, we have the Sun, the Moon, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn and Mercury all linked together with different sort of metals and stuff like that. So what have we got to add on to this? Well we had Solgaleo and Lunala have their proper reveals and that gave us a bit more information. Solgaleo is, according to its sort of description line, the beast that devours the Sun. Now where does this come from and why is it a steel psychic type? Well, it comes from common imagery in alchemy of a green lion consuming the sun. So basically, you know, hence beast that devours the sun, lion eats the sun, sort of thing. Why is it green? We don't you know, why is it not green for Solgaleo? We don't know. Possibly they tried a green lion and it looked really terrible, so they decided to go with a different, you know, sort of uh, design there. But it does represent the purification or dissolution of metals. Hence the steel typing. So that means that you know uh, the beast devouring the sun represents you know the, the the lion itself represents a dissolution of metals. Dissolution meaning it can dissolve, you know stuff like that. Because obviously in alchemy solvents are a sort of a big thing. You know if something is a solvent and you can you know dissolve something in it, it's good. Uh, and the more things you can dissolve in it, the better is basically how it works. So that's where Solgaleo comes from, and that's why it's a lion. Uh, and that's also again tying back into alchemy. Lunala, as you know, there wasn't as much of a tie in there. The line in its description was something like uh, the beast that calls the moon. There's nothing as related to it in uh, alchemy, but there are some animals in alchemy that sort of you know generally are there. There are five birds, and we can assume these five would, you know, at least one of them is going to be related to Lunala because birds makes a lot of sense. There is the black crow, the white swan, the peacock the pelican and the phoenix. Now the black low black low black crow is the most likely one to be represented you know, to sort of be related to Lunala because it re represents putrefaction, which is sort of the opposite of the purification and dissolution that Solga did, so they will obviously be opposites. Black crow also represents death, hence the sort of the ghost typing might make a lot of sense there. And stuff like that. It could also have some sort of represent you know some relation to the peacock because the peacock had a very astral you know rash astral body stuff like that hence the sort of the design uh, first up of Lunala and also the fact that it's astral space moon stuff like that it's also worth mentioning that you know they're both psychic types because generally the Pokemon company likes psychic to be related to space so anything sort of space like they sometimes add a psychic type on you know, Deoxys psychic type um, obviously Clefairy is not, but Clefairy is from the moon, so it's not really from space. But obviously Solrock and Lunatone are also part psychic, so that makes a bit of sense in you know, that sense. But that's the reason why Solgaleo is a steel type. And Lunala obviously being part ghost type, maybe relating to the death bit of the crow there, stuff like that. Before we go on to sort of the main big thing for this video, we also have the map of Alola, which could relate to alchemy theory. Seems weird, you know, to start first up, but you can see there are four islands there, and that's also four elements in alchemy. And we've already seen 
the earth element on a temple in one of the previous shots and that temple seems to be on the westernmost island you can see it cropping out of the uh, sort of the canyon area there so if we say that's earth we see here we have three left and three elements left which are water air and fire there's an island to the top right which has a volcano on it so fire we'll put that there we have two left over water and air these are a bit more tentative but the starting island you can see has a, has a weird waterfall in the back sort of section of the island so it could relate to the, be the water type of island. And the last island, the biggest island, has two, you know, has a large mountain range splitting the island in half. Hence, it could be the air island, hence, you know, because it's tall, it's you know, up in the air where air, stuff like that. That's a bit of a tentative link, so, you know, it's not as binding. But uh, four islands, you know, obviously excluding the artificial island, but four islands, four elements. If there was a temple on each island, for example, you know, we've seen the Earth Temple, so we're calling the Earth Temple, for example, on the Western Island. You could have the Water Temple be in sort of the forest section of the starting island, or in the cave of the cliff in the starting island, just hidden away there. The Fire Temple, of course, could be inside the volcano, and the Air Temple could be at the top of the mountain range, or you know, somewhere along the mountain range. So that could be relating to the legendaries, could relate to the storyline. We don't know, but they might do that. Then we move on to something else in alchemy that can tie it all together: Azoth. Now, Azoth is, in alchemy, the universal medicine or solvent, so basically it was an aim or a goal of the work of alchemy, very similar to the Philosopher's Stone. You know, a solvent, you know, so a universal solvent, it can dissolve anything in it. Universal medicine, you know, it could cure anything, basically. So it was a very sort of good thing. The symbol for Azoth was of the Cad 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 Caduceus. You will obviously recognize this, you know, um, it's a medicine symbol nowadays anyway. But where have we heard the word Azoth before? Well, first up, in Auras, there was Project Azov. Team Acra or Team Magma had this project, uh, and the purpose was to bring the world back to the beginning. So you bring it back to the beginning of the world uh, by either using Primal Groudon or Primal Kyogre to reset the world, basically. Then, if that, you know, when that failed, um, Max, that was one Max, it was a uh, Acra admin Matt, maybe, and the, uh, the admins, basically, then decided they were going to attempt again in the Delta episode, which, of course, then failed. But that was Project Azov. But then there are also two files in the base, one on Mega Evolution and Primal Reversion, and the other one mentioning the ultimate weapon use by AZ. So maybe that is related somewhere, but that's Azov, the first sort of cropping up. Azov has also appeared lately in media for Pokemon again, because the Magiana movie takes place in the kingdom of Azov. Again, now we're speculating. You know, people are saying maybe this kingdom is actually in Sun and Moon because we see this walled city. It could be the same sort of thing. Of course, it's a bit of a long, I mean, a bit of a stretch because no important, you know, no important things appeared before. And of course, currently Ash is in the Kalos region, not the Alola region. So it would be a, a bit of a stretch to introduce the new region in a movie because they usually don't do that in the anime. Um, but who knows? That might relate there. But we have heard of Azov again now. So, how does this relate to the game, to alchemy, to whatever? Well, there is something else called Harmonic Convergence. Now, this isn't related to alchemy directly, but it can tie in. So, Harmonic Convergence is basically the alignment of all the planets. So, if you imagine our solar system, we have all these planets, and they all line up in a single line or in a similar pattern. For example, a, gen a general one because uh, obviously we don't line up together very often, is um, at the corners of an equilateral triangle. So, you know, for example, the Earth could be here, Mercury could be at the top of the Sun, and, you know, each different corner, for example. That's that's the more common one. But there are different interpretations of this, of course, uh, because people like to do their interpretations. But some astrological interpretations are that the event would come at the end of a hell cycle um, and begin a new age of peace. So, you know, um, just a generic sort of thing there. It did actually happen in 1973, I think, where a certain number of uh, planets, I think it was a, you know, a certain amount, aligned in some format. Um, but that's sort of the, one of the interpretations. The other one being that when it happened, all the evils of the world would end. So war, famine, everything would go away. So how does this relate to the games? Well... One possibility, um, if we think first about the metals and alchemy, they actually represent planets. So we have obviously Sun, the Moon, representing gold and silver, Solgaleo and Lunala. 
And then we have the Earth, it's not actually represented in alchemy, but we're just talking about the Earth in general. We have Mars, which represents iron. We have Venus, which represents copper. Mercury is Quicksilver, or Mercury itself. Uh, Jupiter represents tin, and Saturn represents lead. There's also Uranus as another planet, but of course it's not really a planet anymore, so we kind of forget about it, and it's not one of the main planets of alchemy anyway. But, talking about it, Mars, iron, we had that Pokemon that was sort of hinted at with the trademark, Mars Shadow. Mars is in the name, so maybe that's going to relate into it there. And of course, as I mentioned in the last alchemy theory, Mars Shadow or Mars has the symbol of the, the male symbol, whereas Venus has a female symbol, so we possibly might get a duo like that, who knows. Um, and of course we have Magiana to think about as well. Magiana can very easily represent either Mercury, Jupiter, or Saturn, because you know, why not tie it in that way, it's a man-made Pokemon, it could easily fit in one of those. What I'm trying to say here, they might introduce you know, Pokemon to represent each of these planets, and because the alignment is to believe to cause, you know, is possibly would cause peace, maybe the, the evil team, rather than being inherently evil in these games, will be a team of fanatics. They'll be, not sorry, crazy, but they will believe that by causing this harmonic convergence, they will end all of the bad things in the world, sort of thing. So, you know, even though they might be going against you and, you know, doing some things that uh, you wouldn't agree with, they are, you know, inherently going and working towards a peaceful world or a a new age, but, but, it, but you know, obviously to, to do this, they might have to use legendaries. Now we know Solgaleo and Lunala, so maybe instead of going for the extended harmonic convergence, they would just go for Earth, Moon, and Sun, line up like an eclipse, which is a type of harmonic convergence. Um, but doing this, you know, using legendaries to control the Sun and the Moon and other planets doesn't exactly sound like the safest thing to do. So obviously doing so might end up causing some bad things on the region of the Alola, on the region of the Alola, on the Alola region, um, and or hence you might then have to try and stop them because of course lining up some planets is not going to end <laughs> all the wars, um, so you might have to stop them before their controlling of the legendaries ends up destroying the Alola. Who knows though? That would be an interesting you know, concept because they're not truly evil, they're trying to do the right thing, but they're just a bit blinded. So that would be an interesting concept there. But that's harmonic convergence. And now obviously, you know, that's alchemy theory part two, also tying in harmonic convergence there. I was gonna do a different video, but before I tie it all together here. So that's sort of the second part of alchemy theory. Another thing to think about when we think about the different birds of alchemy is that yes, okay, the black crow and the peacock might represent Lunala, but we also have the white swan and the phoenix. Do those sound like any Pokemon we know? You know, um, White Swan, Lugia, Phoenix, ho -Oh. Apparently uh, the White Swan also has representations of the moon in spirituality. So it could be Lugia being the moon one and ho -Oh being the sun. Obviously my Golden Silver Fairy came out just before Sun and Moon did, uh, about the same time. Uh, so maybe Lugia and ho -Oh will tie in somehow here as well. That's a crazy thing to say. I know, but obviously a lot of people have been saying that Lugia and Ho-Oh in the clouds of the Lulu region too, so that end up, might end up being a hint at something. I don't know. Just an idea to throw out there. But if you enjoyed this Alchemy Theory version 2 or part 2, let me know down below by leaving your thoughts about Alchemy Theory now that we have a bit more extended sort of um, you know, interaction, interpretation, whatever. Let me know what you think down below. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button down you know, just below the screen somewhere. But for now, this is the it for me for today. I'll thank you for watching, I'll be seeing you next time, goodbye my friends.